Good morning, Ignite and Epic. So we're continuing our book of five things to pray for the people that you love. And we're on page 39. And to this week, we're looking at how to pray for a neighbour. And hopefully you've all read Acts chapter 17, verses 16 to 34. If you haven't, pause the video and give it a quick read. Um, and today we're looking at verse 23, which says this. It says, for as I walked around and looked carefully at your objects of worship, I even found an altar with the inscription to an unknown God. So you are ignorant of the very thing that you worship. And this is what I am going to proclaim to you. So Paul was showing the people of Athens that they were looking in all the wrong places for God. They were looking for anything of prestige to worship. And they even had a table, an altar table that said to an unknown God. I remember um, somebody telling me when I was younger that we all have a God shaped hole in our heart and that we will spend our whole lives trying to fill it. And it's a bit like um, a baby playing with that toy where they've got to put the right shape in the hole. But they often are trying to jam a wooden square into a circular hole. It's just not working. And that is what Paul is saying to the people of Athens in our verse. He said to them, you aren't even sure of what you worship. But he's saying to them also that look no further because Jesus is your answer. He is the missing piece that completes the puzzle. Um, the virus has really shown how temporary our earthly idols are. And our book is asking us to pray for a neighbour. And it says in point number two, what is your neighbour worshipping? Their children, their career, their football team. Pray that your neighbour would become dissatisfied with chasing after these things and start searching for a life with real meaning. So our book gives three examples. Um, Worshipping our children, is that going to help us in this time? No. Worshipping our careers, is that going to give us answers uh, during this time? No. And the last one was football teams. Now this is a good one. Because who would have imagined that the wealth of the Premier League could be stopped? None of us saw it coming. But even football uh, in this moment has shown to be temporary and fragile. The resurrection of Jesus offers eternal forgiveness, relationship and hope. And isn't that exactly what the world needs? at this time. So why should we be praying for a neighbour? Well we've all seen the news and everybody's idols are on hold. Most importantly there are hundreds of people every day who are dying. Most who are lonely and confused in their last days. Um, and they're lonely and confused because they haven't understood the hope of the resurrection of Jesus. What a tragedy that is, but we can be doing something about it. We can start small by praying for our neighbours. Um, pray for your, a neighbour who doesn't know Jesus, that they would fill their God-shaped hole with the hope of the resurrection. And I want to share one last thought with you. There was a man called Charles Wesley, and he wrote around 6,000 songs praising Jesus in his life. And on his deathbed, he wrote one final song. And he was so frail that his wife had to write it down for him. 
And the words to the song were very short, but they said this. They said, Jesus, my only hope thou art, strength of my failing flesh and heart. Oh, could I catch one smile from thee and drop into eternity? Wouldn't it be great if everybody's neighbour could have that hope in life? Why not start praying for your neighbour today?